My name is Kevin Arnold. I started boxing at 13 years old, uh, like definitely against the wishes of my parents. Uh, it was, I think, uh, when I was younger, it's one of those things you, you do almost to rebel. And uh, it's was a, it was a very intimidating thing to start with, but it, my first fight was probably the, the, one of the best experiences of my life. I remember going in and being scared and being uh, unprepared. And, and becoming victorious and coming out and feeling a, a great sense of accomplishment. And I think that, that feeling becomes addictive. Kevin's strength as a fighter would, would have to start in his commitment and dedication. His commitment to getting better, the dedication he puts in. I wouldn't say he has, he's the most talented fighter, but he definitely tried harder than most of the other fighters have ever trained. My trainer Jerry and I have uh, been together for almost 12 years. We've had a, a very solid, long relationship. I mean, him and I sometimes are more like uh, father and son than, than anything else. You know, we, we fight and we, we disagree and we argue, but when it comes down to it, when, when the, you're in the corner and you've been hurt or you need, the, the, you need to trust your cornerman, Jerry and I have always been together, so it's a very comforting feeling to have someone like that in your corner. Jump, jump, second jump, second jump. Step, step, second jump. One, two, three, four. Step, two, jump. Step, 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 so for me, I, I always try to think positive. I always try to think of what I'm going to do right and, and what I'm going to do to win. I don't try to think of the negative aspects of it. But as a person, you know, you have to think that there are dangers within the sport which you have to be aware of, and I hope I'm smart enough to retire before I, I get, last too long in the sport. blessing I've had is owning this gym and, and is being able to see the mistakes that others make and, and I think sometimes there's this study that says you learn uh, half of what you're taught and 90% of what you teach so I think that being able to teach other people and see how they improve and, and then stuff allows you to get a better insight into the sport. Kevin running his own uh, boxing gym for uh, the clientele that he has downtown clientele he has. I think it's somewhat of an oddity in boxing because you don't normally see professional boxers running their, running a boxing program during the day and then having to go train themselves. I think for myself, I think it would be very difficult to be, to be doing boxing almost 24-7, which Kevin does. And, but it seems like Kevin does handle it quite well. He, he's, very, he's, a, he's a student of Kevin's a real student of boxing and he's always asking questions why this or why that and he's always trying to develop himself to be better and uh, he's, you know, he's learning from some of the best going down to Vegas and uh, just making him a better overall boxer and uh, he's got the brains and behind uh, everything he does where some guys they just go in there and do it they don't know how they do it or Kevin's different you know, he, he knows what, what an angle is and uh, what he needs to do in order to Perform Before a fight, I always think that when I when I actually before my first fight, I remember watching this interview with with uh, Custom Auto, who's Tyson's first trainer, and he once said, uh, "The hero and the coward think the same thing. It's what the hero does and the coward doesn't do that makes him different." So before going into a fight, I, I expect to feel um, some fear, some anticipation, because that's what makes me sharp as a competitor. It's like if I. Uh, if I walked a tightrope and wasn't scared of it, you know, I probably would fall off. I think 
that anticipation is what makes you sharp, but it's also being able to curb that anticipation so you can make it or turn it into positive energy that makes a difference. Kevin Fear is a fighter, is probably the fear of that he's not done enough in the gym coming up to a fight. He always has a sense of insecurity that he's maybe perhaps he's left some stone unturned. I try to convince him of the sparring sessions we had coming up to the fight, the miles he's put in running, training, the amount of pad work, bag work, that he can tip top shape. Mentally, I try to assure him of the positive things and get the negative things out of the way. My first fight in Vancouver was from Mother Rock. It was a, it was great to be on home soil for a change. You know, I've always fought in other people's hometowns. I was very excited. I had a lot of my friends and, and family out to it. But in the same sense, it was very disappointing. Uh, my opponent pulled out. And at the last minute, they had to bring in a replacement. And uh, the replacement really didn't offer up much of a challenge. And, and it's almost anticlimactic to have somebody who just, who you can blow out so quick. One of the more difficult things in boxing is trying to find the appropriate or right opponents for boxers that are on their way up. And this is no different for Kevin. Um, one of the things that actually adds to the problem that we have finding good opponents for Kevin, um, we've, we've been to venues in the past where the opponents just haven't shown up. Uh, we've had cancellations the day or two before, and it's very difficult to find replacements when that happens. Um, and the thing that does add to the problem that we have with Kevin Fine opponents is he's, he can punch. He has a pretty good punch. And what opponents, the guys that are fearful of are getting knocked out because then you're suspended for 60 to 90 days, meaning they can't make a living for the next three months uh, get, getting boats. So that's what makes it difficult for Kevin to get uh, proper, proper opponents or good opponents to develop his career. Uh, I've never felt concerned about my opponents during a fight. I mean, I think later on, like, I, no one wants to see someone get injured. And I, I would like everybody to walk out of the ring healthy and happy. But in, in a fight and in the moment, I've never felt concerned. I mean, I think it's a, they're going with the same mentality as me, which is we're both going in to knock each other out. And to have that, you can't feel concerned for your opponent. I mean, that being said, there's there's no reason I don't want them to be as healthy and live as happy a life as possible after, but during a, during a fight there's never a concern. The second run of the Rock I was, I was a lot happier with, you know, we went in against a game opponent who had about 100 amateur fights, was a former Canadian national amateur champion, and was a very gritty, tough individual who we knew could, could give us some adversity and go around. So, Training went great for it. We brought in a new trainer, Jesse Reed. We had good sparring, and, and it, it paid off in the end. I've always said that when I started boxing, it was more about me uh, trying to do as, go as far as I could. And the minute that I stopped going there, I'm going to quit. I mean, I, I don't want to be an opponent. I've, ne I've never said I wanted to make $100,000 in boxing. I wanted to do that. I've always said I wanted to win a world title. I, I've always had that goal in mind. And in my mindset, the minute that goal ends is the day I quit boxing. I think as a fighter, you have to look at what has happened to some other fighters and, and keep that in the back of your mind that you don't want to go too long in this career. You don't want to take too much punishment because whether or not it's medically proven or not, you know, you can just see by example, there are boxers out there that are, that are walking around with, I think, um, deteriorated functions and my, my question is always is was it from fighting or was it from sparring in gyms for long hours and, and taking punishment was it was it from being mal you know making weight losing losing your water and, and taking more injury uh, a lot of the fighters that are injured are they are they the, the, the older fighters that were fighting with horsehair gloves and and longer rounds so I mean I, I would like to retire before that happens I would never want to lose my cognitive ability, but to be a champion, to be successful, you can't think of that or else they'll hold you back and, and hinder your performance.